Fulton County Public Library. Hi, I'm Kristen. I'm also with the Fulton County Library. And today, welcome to Craft Time. What we're going to do is out of peat pots, um, those, and these are four inch peat pots. Use these to plant your seeds in for the garden. We are going to make some fancy little baskets. They can be used for Easter or just for any decoration. So today, Kristen is going to get started and we're going to show you how we're going to make these cute little things. Um, to decorate it, you can use various things, um, buttons, ribbons, just little things. Uh, this one, um, I took, and I didn't have it, I couldn't find my white paint, so what I took, I took drywall paste, and I just um, slapped it on, and it doesn't have to be neat or perfect, and it gives a little bit of a rough, rough texture. And then on this one here, the green one, we used green metallic paint. It doesn't take a lot, you barely put it on, it dries in about five to seven minutes, a very quick process. And what I did on these, I actually hole punched and made a little handle. You can use your hole punch or you can take a toothpick and just very, very carefully punch a hole in it. And I just took some vine that I had sitting around the house, put a couple pieces together, I glued them on the ends Put them through the little pot, glued them back in inside of the pot, and then all we took is you will see that we took a coffee filter, and you can buy these in brown or white, you really can get them in several colors. I put a little bit of shredded brown paper that I just uh, made at home, I just shredded my own little brown paper, put some in the bottom, put your coffee filter in and put a few more of the brown treadings in and you have a cute little pot. And on the front here, Kristen's gonna show you how we're gonna do that. Hey, um, for our craft today, we're using um, hole punch flowers from the oh, scrapbooking paper. And I'm just gonna glue this onto the front right here. You can use uh, the hot glue gun or you can use Mod Podge. You can also wrap ribbon around it if you want to. Yeah, with the Mod Podge it takes a little while to dry. Well, we might have to use Yeah, we may have to use okay. the Okay. What we're going to do is sometimes the Mod Podge doesn't like to stick when you use texture. So all I'm going to do is take the, barely put any glue around it, careful your fingers because it's hot, just tuck it in and you can use um, a couple of these over here, you'll see that I just, I have buttons and I had a bunch of antique buttons at home so this is what I did with this, I just layered them. We also have quite a few little stickers. It can, it's cute like this, just like this, or we've got a lot of ribbon. You can just add ribbon at the top. And that's all you really need for your um, little peat pot, if I drop this on her. <laughs> so once your little pot's done, then you can start your Easter eggs. And these are really cool. We have several types. This is a wooden egg. Now they're, they're a little bit more costly. They're like 99 cents to $2 a piece. So I just kind of strayed away from that. These are already done. Um, eggs that's already been covered with paper. These run like $3 for six. And I still found that a little bit too expensive for me. But easy to do. So what I did, I went out and got cheap Easter eggs. 12 of them for 99 cents. So tear it apart. Very carefully. Just glue the outer edge of your Easter egg. Put them together. Hold for a few seconds. Now you've made your egg. Very simple. The cheaper ones, I would suggest to buy a little bit more expensive ones than the really, really flimsy ones they seem to break, but still the same concept once you start laying on your paper. 
And here we already started um, paper macheing them. Uh, we used, uh, you first put Mod Podge over the front of it, and then after that you layer on another set of Mod Podge over the paper. So after you let set for a while, it'll harden and it'll give this nice looking shell around it. And while she's doing that, you can cover your eggs with, I um, took an old book and I cut it in thin strips. They're probably about a quarter inch because that, it seems to lay flatter on your Easter egg. Here we have the handy dandy old brown little paper bag that you guys can buy for 100 for like 99 cents. And on this egg, I actually took chalkboard paint and painted it. It takes several coats. It takes time drying in between, but then the kids could write or design and chalkboard paint comes in all colors. I just had black at home, but chalkboard paint comes in all colors. This is another egg and I just had some leftover dyed coffee filters from another project. Tore it up. Same little plastic egg and did this one. This one I didn't like how it turned out, so I painted it. <laughs> it just I didn't like I had done a design on it and I didn't like it. So we painted. I painted it and then I took lavender Epsom salt, mosh podged it, rolled it into it, and it smells really good. You can get lavender and you can get spearmint Epsom salts. Cheap. Yep. You'll see, and it takes time. Usually we do a half egg, let them dry, do the other half. After it dries, it's just a lot easier to work with. Otherwise, your fingers get sticky and you rip the paper back off. Okay, I'm gonna lay that down there. No, no, your hands are probably all sticky. Yeah. <laughs> and then comes the fun part again, decorating the egg. And again, we had a bunch of, um, you can cut these out. I have paper, I have felt, um, and I just cut them in all different sizes. And now I have actually a paper punch, but you can actually just set and the kids can cut these out. I just found a couple that I liked and I just put a piece of ribbon that I had. I put one little flower and then I just add another little button on the top. Now this again is the wood egg because it stands. But, um, so you paper mache it, right? Yep, yep. Yep. I just paper mache it and, um, as you can see, it's got some white spots on it because that's where my fingers stuck before I realized I should only mm -hmm. do half an egg at a time. But that gives it a little bit of a design. And then we have stamps. These are really fun. You take, the, we have a bunch of butterflies, um, dragonflies with your stamp pads. Stamp it. And you will see right here on this egg right here. I just took and I stamped a butterfly right on top of the, the layering. And I quite didn't like it didn't get dark enough for me. So then I just took my old pen I had and I traced it a little bit more. And you could go all over the egg and it's just really, really cute. So I'll let you show them. This is, I think, the dragonfly. And these are the ones I've already bought from the store. You don't even really have to do anything with these. These are kind of cute. You can add ribbon to it, put a little bow on it. You're done. The stamp pad. Show. Yeah, it shows a little bit, but there's a little bit of design, and just cover it. Just cover it. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Just cover it, and then put a little bow or a little ribbon on the top. I mean, it's endless. We've got several different things here you can use. We've got ribbons, buttons, stickers, paper. If you don't have an old book, photocopy some old sheet music, and we have um, some Easter sheet music that we tea dyed. Let it set. And then we just shredded it again and did our egg. And that's all you have to do.